Pass on uh, Management System Standard ISO 9001 and ISO 45001. So as you know that uh, uh, now this this uh, as you know Credential Global is our sister company. Uh, last time last year we conducted training for all of you, most of you who have attended the training and got certified as an as an as an qualified internal auditors. So um, uh, please uh, uh, raise your hands, uh, you know, who have been qualified as an internal auditors. You go to the reactions on the top, you can see uh, reactions and please raise your hand so that I know that there are people in this group who have been qualified as an internal auditor for ISO 9000 and ISO 45000. You can give your reactions here. Just click raise your hand like this. OK, yeah. All right, so we have uh, uh, Mary Ann, we have Sonia, okay. Who else? Uh, I think uh, Vikas, uh, what about Vikas, Vikas and Vincent? Okay, all right. So people who are the people who are new to this session? I mean, uh, they have just joined or uh, they have not gone through any training as far as ISO 9000 is concerned. They are totally freshers. Anyone from the group? Anyone from the group who are absolutely freshers who have no exposure to the standard ISO 9001 and uh, ISO 45000, yeah, please raise your hand, okay? Uh, the K and Brendan, okay? All right. So fine, I would like to welcome you all and uh, let's get on to the part of introduction. Uh, many of you already know me. Uh, my name is Dr. Sandeep Chalke, and uh, I am, uh, you know, principal consultant and auditor uh, from ISO Mantra as well as Max Standard Certification. And uh, my basic background is, uh, you know, I have a graduate degree in electronics and electrical engineering, my master's in industrial engineering, and uh, my PhD also in industrial engineering. I am lead auditor for the most of the ISO standard, and I am also. Uh, qualified as a certified uh, information system auditor, a certified uh, information system uh, you know manager, and certified uh, uh, professional in uh, risk in information security and control from uh, Isaka USA. So, uh, and I have total industry experience of around 30 years, and uh, in GRC uh, sector, I have around 20 years of experience. So that is my brief background. Uh, now I would request you to introduce yourself one by one. Please go ahead. Please, uh, you know, unmute your microphone when you are speaking and introduce yourself and uh, just talk about your name, your department and your role. Hi, I am Mary Ann Bueno. Um, I have been with the company for almost nine years. So I am um, a category manager for beauty and personal care under the uh, merchandising department. So um, I am in charge in um, sourcing out products uh, what, uh, that has potential to be sold in the stores. Um, we conceptualize promotions hand-in-hand uh, -hand with marketing. Uh, we set up prices uh, for the products that we sell in the product uh, in the stores. Um, we also manage inventory in terms of um, slow-moving um, and fast-moving items. And then uh, we are also um, involved in uh, ordering the 
uh, regular items. That's wonderful. Welcome to this session. Next, please. Michael. Hello. Uh, so I lost my voice. Uh, my name is Michael Camu. I'm uh, with the company for seven years now. And I look after the stock take. Uh, we have about more than 200 uh, stock takes within a year. So our job is to go around new stores and audit the county when they're doing stock take. Oh, that's good. OK, welcome, uh, Chester. Chester, are you there? All right, Brendan, Jenny, Kaya, Sonia, please introduce yourself one by one. Uh, Hi, my name is Vikas. Yes, Vikas, go ahead, please. My name is Vikas. I'm looking the finance department. And uh, I'm working with the company for 15 years. And uh, I'm look after that uh, all stock take, financials, monthly financials, uh, we'll generate report and this is to the management. All right. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. So Sorry. I'm Jen. Yeah, I'm Jenny. So I'm an area manager for pharmacy. So I've been in the company for almost nine years, and then uh, my role is uh, to be uh, to lead the and guide and support the pharmacy managers in their day to day operation, and then also um, to be a moral support to them, and then yeah, uh, ensure that the KPR KPI are being. Um, Make sure that it's being achieved. OK. All right, Sarah. Next, please. Hello, uh, my name is Brendan. Uh, yes. I'm with General Tens team. I recently joined the uh, CPL. Uh, this is my one year, two months to be exact. Under the internal audit department. Uh, OK, all right. Welcome. Hello, my name is Sonia. Um, yes, Go ahead. All right, thank you, Dr. Sandeep. Um, good to be back in this um, refresher program again. Um, my name is Sonia Osembo. I'm the manager of people and culture. My role involves providing support to the GM people and culture and also overseeing the um, all the HR functions, operational HR functions for the business. All right. And well, I also I'm have sorry. yeah, yes, I please. also have with me Deborah as well here. So Deborah will introduce herself. Yeah. Good afternoon, team. Good afternoon. My name is well, my surname is Ragella. I've been with the company for almost 12 years. I work as a coordinator for people and giving support to Sonia. Thank you. So thank you all. And uh, now before we start, I just would like to, you know, you to share with the group, you know, what you would like to achieve through this particular session. I mean, what are your expectations? Uh, because uh, some of you have already gone through the training of, and for them it is a refreshers training, but uh, some of you are totally fresh. So this is going to be a sort of a blended group uh, where there are experienced people and there are new people. So I would like to uh, you know, make this session interesting for both of you, both the groups, so that people who have already gone through the training, they don't feel uh, you know, the same thing being repeated to them. At the same time, they get something new and the new group, uh, you know, new people who have joined this absolutely freshers. Uh, 
they get the uh, the entire you know the the the, the distilled knowledge of the standards in these two sessions because you know last year when we conducted this training this training probably went on for for two to three months you know every week and twice in a week we have to have the session and probably we have spent uh, more than 50 60 hours in training so uh, this time it won't be possible because it is just a surveillance assessment and in the surveillance assessment uh, we are trying to refresh your understanding and refresh your knowledge so a uh, group i would like you to you know share with us what what are your objectives what are what is the purpose what you would like to achieve uh, by attending this particular session. So I just would like to brief you. Uh, today uh, we have started late. I mean, uh, we are almost almost 30, hour, 30 minutes late, uh, late. We were supposed to start at 10 o'clock sharp. But anyway, uh, and then again, uh, we are going to have the next session on Wednesday. So in these two sessions, uh, I I will be covering, you know, how you would like, uh, how, uh, you know, to interpret the standard and what are the preparations you are supposed to do for the surveillance audits. So that is from the my side, but I would like to fine tune it to your requirements. So please share. Please feel free, you know, to share that. What are your expectations from this particular training? Please go ahead. Anybody. It is not necessary that everybody speaks, but maybe a couple of you can share your thoughts like how you would like, uh, you know, what what are the objectives you would like to achieve through, through these particular sessions? We have Edward who has just joined us. So Edward, would you like to introduce yourself uh, and your role? You can unmute your microphone. Unmute your microphone, yes. Hi, uh, good afternoon team. Um, yes, I'm Edward. I'm just joining this refresher. I wasn't sorry, but part of the initial uh, uh, ISO uh, that was done uh, previously. Uh, uh, previously, I was based in Laid, looking after supply chain. Uh, currently, I moved to Port Mosby, looking after Port Mosby uh, retail sales. And um, yeah, so that's basically me, uh, Hardware House, Port Mosby. Thank you, Edward. Yeah, anybody would like to share, like, you know, what are what are the expectations for, from this particular training programs? Please, anyone. I think uh, we can have someone from the uh, the old group and someone from the new group. Uh, freshers and the people who have already attended the training previously. So I think we have people from uh, internal audit team. Who, uh, you know, some of you are freshers. Maybe any one of you may would like to share your thoughts. Or maybe, uh, you know, the old hands, people from the old team, the Sonia, uh, Vincent, uh, you know, Vikas, anybody would like to share, you know? Team, this is going to be a dialogue, you know, this is, this is not going to be a monologue that, you know, I'll be lecturing you because if you think that I'm going to lecture you, then this is not the the adults we learn. We learn by sharing our thoughts. Uh, we learn by exchanging our ideas. So it's not that you know you you are the absolute freshers, the first first year in um, in, in the university or a college. Uh, you are all seasoned professionals, and uh, you know you know exactly what you are doing. Uh, you had your training and education, and this is something new you are trying to learn. So I think uh, we can do that by exchanging our ideas and exchanging our thoughts. So anybody would like to share? Yeah, somebody is raising hand. Please go ahead. Yes, anyone would like to speak? I think people are, uh, you know, I mean, 
somehow I feel them shy today. They are not ready to open up. So anyway, we'll move forward. So uh, let's start with the business. I mean, all of you. OK, so Brendan is Brendan is asking how to prepare for an, for an ISO audit. OK, all right. Thank you, Brendan. OK, so uh, let's start with the business. I mean, all of you, we are I mean, you're working for CPL and you know, we are working for our, our own company. So let's try to understand what is a business. Uh, business basically, uh, you know, it's it's an organization or or an enterprise uh, which is engaged in commercial, industrial, or professional activities. A business can be uh, profit oriented, or business can be uh, non-profit oriented. Uh, business can be, uh, you know, publicly traded corporation, or business can be a privately held corporation or company. A business can be uh, agricultural cooperative. So. Uh, basically, what we are talking about is uh, any commercial, industrial, or professional activity undertaken by an individual, a group, organization, or a society is what we refer to as uh, business. And uh, business are supposed to engage in uh, you know type of economic activities. Now they include uh, you, you know the purchase of the raw material or the purchase of the product, sale, sale of the the, the final product, the manufacturing or provision of services, uh, processing, uh, you know, these are the activities and then you have the support activities like a technical support or a technology support. We have human resources, uh, we have accounting and finance, we have internal audit. So these are all economic activity and. Um, uh, you know, the, the profit created by the business is often regarded as an overall measure of a performance of uh, so we, we talk about the the financial yardstick of uh, measuring business efficiency and evaluating managerial competence. So uh, we presume that if the managers are competent, if people are competent and if they are working in a uh, favorable internal or external environment, then uh, business is uh, supposed to make the profit. Uh, now, uh, you know, business as we know, it includes everything. It includes the the very small company or maybe a family owned restaurant, or it can be like a multinational conglomerate like a G or Amazon or Google or, you know, Microsoft. Uh, now to do a business with another company, a business uh, must engage in some kind of transaction or exchange of value with that company. So basically what we are doing is that uh, we are transacting or exchanging value with the other company. So the business is supposed to create the value. That means, you know, we take certain inputs. Those inputs are processed by us and then we, we, we add value to that. And that is how we make the profit. So you are not going to get the customer until unless you add a value to the customer. So value addition to the customer is very important. So, uh, you know, uh, business is created and managed, managed by the people. So we have to understand that business is not about the, the machineries and the, the brick and mortar stories. That means you cannot say that CPL is a building or CPL are the equipments. CPL uh, is basically the people working with the CPL. So business uh, is always created and managed by the people. And the, and and they are being I mean, destined to to make the profit or to make a loss based on the, the competence of the people and the decision taken by the people. And we have to understand that in today's environment, uh, it is not the sole objective of a business to make a profit but also to to uh, create a wealth for the society to create the goodwill with the customers and there are a lot of societal fact factors because uh, you know i am connected with some of the people on the facebook uh, from your company and i can see and often i visit your, the the website of your company and i see that you have a lot of social initiatives so uh, these social initiatives are not just you know uh, uh, to to uh, to make to make the to to it's like a PR exercise, you know, because today people come to know that you know you know this company is trying to just do the PR exercise and they are not really interested in us or creating value to the society. So, uh, you know, I mean, 
contributing to the society, uh, you know, having your corporate social responsibilities very important. So this is what is expected out of business today. Now, any any objective of any business, so uh, CPL, Amazon, Google, any business. Uh, so, you know, I mean, if we have to list them, the the objective of any business is profitability. Uh, you have to be productive. You have to bring in the efficiency, the growth, uh, the technological dynamism, because today uh, the technology is changing very fast. You cannot be left far behind. Uh, the 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 usual you know the way we used to market earlier we used to have the road shows and we used to have the banners but today we have the internet banners today we have the facebook ads today we have uh, the social media marketing instagram and so many things you know so and to support all that you need to have the technology the stability uh, the financial stability uh, the people stability is very important you cannot have too many people you know, leaving your company and, uh, you know, I'm in mean, the turnaround of the company. Uh, the company has to be self-reliant. That means, you know, whatever your processes, you should be able to uh, manage those processes effectively and uh, in an efficient manner. The survival uh, is very important, as you know that, because many businesses go bust nowadays. And today, survival is not just maintaining the status quo. Uh, today, the survival is to to make growth. So, if your company is growing, then then you can, as an individual, <laughs> make a growth in your life. At the same time, uh, the company has to maintain the competitive strength because uh, you know today nobody is operating in a in a in a monopolistic environment. Uh, there are very few companies, maybe, uh, you know, maybe uh, we can talk about the Facebook. Facebook is is, is sort of a monopolistic uh, platform today. There is no competition to Facebook, but um, yeah, but 99% of the companies, they, they have the competition. Uh, what co customer service do you provide? How, how satisfied and how delighted your customer? Whether you have the financial solvency, uh, the product and service quality, then how do you diversify you know your businesses it's not just you you do one business and keep on doing it uh, the customer needs keep on changing and there are many times uh, you create a needs new needs for the customer so uh, today if you see the example of the the fitness industry we have the fitness trackers on the, on our wrist nowadays and uh, most of the people nowadays they have stopped wearing the wrist watches because the wrist watches now have been replaced by the fitness trackers, and those fitness trackers give you the information about uh, you know your heartbeat, about uh, the blood pressure, about uh, your ECG, um, uh, about your sleep pattern, about the stress factors. So I mean this need was not there earlier, but today uh, you know this. The product was designed, the service was designed in such a way that this need was created. So this, you know, this is how the diversification takes place. And the employee satisfaction and welfare is also very important. So these are the objectives of the business. Now the question is, how do we meet the objectives of the business? Now, uh, in order to meet the objective of our business, uh, we need to first understand the, the context of the business. So what is the context of the business? Context of the business is basically the, the, the environment within which the company the operates or the, the organization operates. So uh, uh, the, when we talk about the context of the business or the environment of the business, or we say the business environment, so we are talking about the uh, the external factors. We are talking about the internal factors, and then of course there are stakeholders or the interested parties. Who are the stakeholders or the interested parties? Anybody would like to tell me who are the stakeholders or who are the interested parties? Yes, Michael. Please unmute your microphone and you can speak. Yeah. Uh, the shareholders. Yes, shareholders are the stakeholders. Who are the other people? Workers and bankers. Yes, of course. Vincent. Yeah, very good. Uh, suppliers and customers. Yeah, Marianne. Yeah, lovely. 
And we have owners, we have employees, uh, we have consumers. So these are the people, the end users. Uh, these are the interested parties, uh, our neighbors. So uh, in, in the in the business environment, contractors, yes, Vincent, correct, contractors. So in the uh, the business environment or the business context, we have to consider uh, we have to consider the 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 external factors and the internal factors. So when we talk about the external context, we talk about what is called as a pestle, political, economical, social. Uh, technological, environmental, and legal. Uh, so today, uh, you know, uh, uh, the first thing what we, when it comes to the external factor is the the COVID nineteen. Ever since COVID nineteen came, as you know that you know our the entire uh, business was uh, the entire life was disrupted. It was uh, usually, you know, a global di disruptive event. Uh, initially, we didn't know how to react to it. So most of us or 99 percent of us, we were confined to our homes and then later on, you know, with certain restrictions, uh, we started our uh, the economic activities. And uh, still, uh, you know, we follow. I mean, uh, now in Mumbai, uh, we don't follow much restrictions as such that the mask is not mandatory and the, the sanitization is not mandatory because uh, for us, the after Omicron, uh, the, the pandemic is under control and we hardly get any cases here. Uh, the secondly, the India being uh, the country, we uh, we invented our own vaccination. So we have the ample supply of vaccination and 75% uh, of our population is already been fully vaccinated. Uh, but you imagine uh, that uh, nobody would have thought about this particular incident uh, or event and uh, we were not ready for it. And that has affected all of us uh, on the personal level, on the family level, on the societal level, on the company level, and on the on the country level, and on the global level. And we didn't know how to react to it. And uh, many of us, uh, you know, uh, lost their jobs. Uh, people didn't get their uh, their salaries for months. Uh, many many of us had to uh, you know go through the pay cuts. Uh, up to the 50% and it was it was very horrible situation uh, now you know when you you have the uh, no economic activities are being conducted so naturally all businesses are being affected and when business cycle is disrupted you know then you have the recession coming in so many countries normally they don't declare that they are in a recession but then uh, uh, you know there is there is uh, the the economic growth is very slow. I'm going to take an example of Sri Lanka. Sri, Sri Lanka has been totally busted now. You know they don't have any money. People don't have they don't have petrol. They don't have fuel. They don't have uh, money. Uh, they don't have the food supplies. Now how come a, a, a small country like Sri Lanka uh, can get into this situation? I mean. Definitely, they would have gone through the the recessionary phase, and then then they have been busted financially. But you know, politicians they don't declare this, uh, they don't come out with the, the real facts to the people, and then you know we have to face this kind of situation. So, uh, when we are talking about the external context, we are talking about the political context, we are talking about um, the economic context. Now you see. Uh, Russia and Ukraine war is going on now. The war is going on in Europe, Eastern Europe, but then all of us are affected because because of the war, uh, the supply chain for the petrol or the the petroleum products being affected. And today, all of us uh, we are paying uh, at least 30 to 40 percent more for the petrol and and the diesel. And when when the cost of transportation goes up, then the inflation goes on. So today. Most of the countries, uh, the inflation is very high. Uh, the things for your normal day to day, uh, you know, survival has become so expensive. So today, uh, you know, your 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 salaries, your income has not increased, but your expenses have increased. So, uh, you know, these are the you know we we consider them as an external factor. We uh, read them about. Uh, on the newspaper or we see them on the TV, 
but we don't really think like how do they affect uh, our operations. So uh, these are some of the factors which I've talked about. So uh, naturally for the pandemic and, and now for the war and for the for the economy being busted, uh, there are definitely the culture, cultural and the social impact of that. So, you know, I mean, socially, as you know, all of us been so much affected. I mean, uh, you know, uh, we uh, we couldn't meet our family members. Uh, we couldn't travel. Uh, we couldn't go to the uh, the gatherings. Uh, we couldn't celebrate our life. Uh, so you know, I mean, people people have postponed their weddings. People have postponed their you know the celebrations. Now all these factors are going to affect, uh, and they are going to have the 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 uh, the economic uh, impact. It's going to have the cultural impact. It can have the social impact. It can have the emotional impact. So these are the some of the external factors which uh, you know I had. Uh, so remember, pestel, you know, political, economical, social, technological, environmental, and legal. So any of these external factors, where you don't have control over them, and when when these factors, uh, you know, uh, they they change, uh, they are going to affect the the operation of your company. The operation of your organization and in turn uh, it's they are going to operate every one of us so we have to keep in mind about the external factors now external factors as you know that they affect uh, the economic plans for the future because uh, you know your company probably would have targeted uh, you know they have every company has got a business plan they have the targets that you know they would like to go for uh, something like uh, every year 15% growth or 20% growth but because of this kind of uh, you know disastrous events you know uh, the economic plans fail uh, then overall there is a recessionary trend in the market or the economy uh, the customer demography changes that means the behavior of the customer changes today people don't want to spend money people would like to curtail their expenses uh, the general level of consumer confidence goes down because people think that, oh, I mean, if this is a factor now, we don't have much saving. So why do we spend money? You know, let's save money for the rainy days. So when the consumer confidence is shaken, uh, the then it in, it, 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 it in turn uh, affects the economy. Uh, the customer expectations, you know, they fluctuate because now customer expects more from you, but they would like to pay less to you. The standardization and certification within the industry, uh, you know, that is why your company has gone for the standardization and the certification ISO 9001 and ISO 45001. Uh, the regulations within the industry may change because uh, the governments, uh, they keep on so much restrictions because, you know, you have uh, you CPL is in, in, in the pharmaceutical supply chain. So uh, anyway, the pharmaceutical supply chain is highly regulated. Uh, then the hardware house, yes, uh, you have many regulations. You have to uh, sell the products, all your hardware products, uh, which meets a certain uh, or specific quality standards and which are safe to use and handle. Uh, then, of course, trade associations and the lobbying powers, they impact and the impact on the neighbors. So, you know, I mean, you have the hardware house and you have the, your warehouses. Uh, the the trucks coming in, trucks going out. Uh, naturally, it's going to affect your neighbors. So these are your stakeholders. So uh, those were the external factors. Now we come to the internal issues. Now internal factors. What are the internal factors? Internal factors is about the structure of the organization. How your organization is structured. Uh, whether your organization, uh, you know, it, it follows the cascading structure or whether it has got a flat structure. You know how people communicate within your organization. Uh, what are the rules within your organization? Are they rigid or or the flexible? If people are willing to adopt to the demands, um, uh, are there availability of the reliable and qualified and competent people? Uh, what is the the motivation of the people? People might be qualified, they might be competent, but they are not motivated. If the motivation level is low, if the, the, the inspiration level is low, then they will not be able to perform. Uh, then, of course, the stability of the workforce. So you have the waging benchmark, uh, and because of that, the people are highly motivated. People would like to come to work every day, and that is how the workforce is stable. 
the retention is there. There is the attrition rate is very low. Uh, people don't leave the company very often, and the 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 impact of the unionization. If you have a union, and if you the union has got very uncordial relationship with the the, the governance or the management of the company, it is going to create uh, the lot of you know the issues for the organization as such. So you know we have the uh, the internal factors and we have these external factors. And uh, you know those how again let me you know a little bit elaborate on the internal issues. So we have the staff competency level. Uh, we have the contractual arrangement with the customers, uh, the payment terms for the customer. If you give the high credit to the customers, probably you'll get more customers. But point is that the customers don't pay you in time, then you have the the, the solvency issues with the customer. The expansion of the customer base, uh, how do you make uh, more and more customers? The relationship with your investors, the credit terms available to you by the financial institutions and by the bankers. What kind of service level agreements you have with your customers and the culture within your organization? So these are the uh, some of the internal factors. And on top of it, we have the interested parties uh, that are relevant to our quality management system or the uh, occupational health and safety management system, or for that matter, any management system. So we have the uh, the owners and shareholders. We have society. We have neighbors. We have supply chain partners. Uh, we have customers. We have consumers. We have employees. So. Uh, we when we talk about the customers, as we know, we have the internal customers and we have the external customers. Now, who are the internal customers? Like you are dealing with, you know, within yourself. So the interdepartmental uh, or intra-departmental people working together, they are the internal customers, and the external customers are external to your organization. So these are the interested parties. So, uh, you know, what we need to do is that in order to uh, to grow in the business, we need to manage the expectation of the stakeholders. So what is the expectation of the shareholders or the owners that the company should make the profit? What are the expectations of the management is that the 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 subordinates and the employees should should, uh, you know, perform very well and they should perform in an effective and efficient manner. What is what? What are what are the expectations of the employees? That employee are expecting that they should get a good culture. They should get good environment to work. They should they 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 should be respected. Uh, you know they should be they should they should have the motivating and inspiring environment. Uh, they should get good compensation. They should get good salaries. The trade unions would like to balance. You know want to make sure that their you know members are treated well. Suppliers would like to have, you know, good good payment terms with you that they are willing to supply you goods and services. In term, they expect, you know, again a good relationship with you. At the same time, the good 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 uh, you know payment terms. The other partners, you know, like we the other partners like the I I Samantra, we we are your partner. We are your certification partner or training partner for the certification. Then you have the client and the consumers. Uh, you have government agencies. So all these people, government agencies, would like you to follow the law, go, follow the regulations. Uh, they want you to pay taxes. Uh, media, media is very interested because uh, you know CPL is a public limited company. So media is interested what public limited company in in our country uh, they they are doing, and whether they are doing it all right. So uh, they will be watching you. And overall society, because your customers, your consumers come from the society uh, to whom you serve. And uh, the perception of these societal members is very important about uh, about your company. So if it's very favorable, definitely your investors and shareholders are going to be very happy about it. Now, you know, we have this something which is called the Michael Porter's. Michael Porter is, is uh, um, the professor in strategic management and he came out with this five force model. So, uh, you know, every company has to, uh, you know, is squeezed by these five forces. So, uh, if you see CPL, then the CPL, uh, you know, the first force is the industry competitors. 
so uh, the competitors are breathing down your neck so uh, the competitors are trying to uh, you know they want to play the game of one upmanship so they would like to give better services they would like to you know give better prices to the customers so they would like to have more customers so you have the the pressure from your the industry competitors you have pressure from your buyers because buyers the the expectation uh from the buyers or the, or your your customers is or the customer satisfaction level is ever moving target you know they would like i mean today you try to satisfy them tomorrow they are going to come out with more expectations the buyers are going to expect more better and better products from you better and better service from you but at the lower price so the pressure from the buyers is increasing then the suppliers you know the suppliers your your supply chain partners uh, you know they would like to have better financial terms with you uh, they would like to have the better price for their product so it's suppliers when we talk about suppliers is not only about the products or the raw material we are talking about all the input so whether uh, it's a internal internet supplier to you whether it is a technology supplier to you whether they are your landlords or whether your employees uh, they are going to expect more and more from you then there are new entrants so there are always a threat of new entrants new players coming into the market and there is a substitute uh, substitute uh, you know the the industry being developed like like take an example of cpl cpl uh, you know you have the pharmacies and you have uh, hardware house but then uh, you have amazon uh, amazon delivers everything online so you have the uh, the, the 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 medical products or the medicines being delivered to your home you have the hardware products delivered to your home so how do you make them if if you know the online platforms they are taking over the uh, you know the shops uh, the pharmacy shop or the hardware house or your warehouses where the customer is reluctant to come because customers say okay i just have to have the paracetamol and the for paracetamol i have to walk down to the pharmacy and i have to buy it why should i do that i mean why don't i you know buy it from the app i just have to just key in a couple of you know the figures and letters on my app and then i get a product at at my doorstep so today you know we need to create an environment for people to come in we have to have deliver that experience to people so somebody is coming to hardware house to buy a hacksaw he needs to come in and he needs to you know have that experience that okay now he is seeing the multiple products from the multiple manufacturers he is going to touch and feel that hacksaw he is going to see the various models with various capacities he is going to get advice from the sales advisor that you know what is what is your requirement why do you require a hacksaw what you are going to do with with it how long you are going to use it what is the what is the ultimate goal you would like to achieve with this what is what is your budget and accordingly uh, the sales advisor is going to advise him and that experience counts you know so today you see you me you know we like buying clothes online you know because they are so cheap but the point is that at one point of time you would like to go to the store now you would like to go to the store you would like to touch the clothes you would like to move around you would like to see other people you know what they are wearing uh you would like to pick up a couple of clothes you would like to go to the you know fitting room and try them on and see in the mirror that how do you look and then you make a purchasing decision you know that is how this the brands are surviving so today if you see all the luxury brands uh, though they have suffered but the point is that you know last last month the entire month i was in malaysia i was in kuala lumpur and i was very surprised uh, when i used to go to mall you take a brands like uh, louis vuitton like coach and there are many other luxury brands there is, there used to be the queue outside the showroom outside the store so people were queuing up to buy these products and you know how expensive the louis vuitton and coach products are so uh, you know i mean if you have to defend yourself against the the apps and the online platforms 
then you have to create the environment you have to create an experience for your customer to come into your store so this is what the the michael porter's uh, you know the five force model talks about now if we have to uh, you know uh, face the external issues if we have to face the internal issues and if we have to find out what are the needs and expectations of our customers and if we have to you know face all these competitive forces in the market and uh, try to survive and grow as a company so that as a as an organization as a unit of a people we grow then what we need to do is we need to do the value chain analysis so what is the value chain analysis so as you know any business we 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 perform certain activities so we have inbound logistics we have operations we have outbound logistics where marketing and sales we have services we have procurement we have technology support and development we have human resources and we have the the overall infrastructure so we have the the management we have finance we have legal we have planning we have internal audit department so all of this all of these processes all of these departments all of these department owners all of these process owners they will have to see the the value chain and in the value chain they'll have to see what are the value added activities and what are the non value added activities and how do we create this value added activities so that ultimately uh, we we satisfy we delight our customer and thereby we increase our profit margin so that is what you know we need to do the value chain analysis and we we need to do the value chain value chain uh, creation now how we do that so i would like to stop here and would like to uh, you know uh, invite your comments or invite your thoughts how do we create a value chain how do we make sure that we delight our customers so what are the tools and techniques available to us so that we create the value chain either you can speak or you can put your comments on the chat please how do you create the value chain what are the tools and techniques available to us people from internal audit department can we start with you Yes please I feel you know I mean I get concerned when I don't get a feedback from you because I I really don't have any way to find out you know whatever I'm speaking to you whether you are getting it correctly or not okay so we have okay the tools and techniques available to us uh, vikas is saying that uh, yes uh, training uh, all right uh, all right uh, brendan is saying product knowledge yes we have to have the better product knowledge yes okay who else please go ahead yeah performance reviews lovely okay uh sonia to add value to hr staff and retention initiatives very good yes market analysis yeah good okay please think cost analysis yes cost analysis wonderful 
Brendan, yeah. Competent staff, Vincent, lovely. Uh, rewards and recognition adds intrinsic value, extrinsic value to employees, yes, Sonia. Management support and commitment, Chester, lovely. Because new technology, wow. Edward, customer service, okay. Now, all this, if we have to follow, then, you know, there's one word which we say that we need to follow the good practices, all right? So if we have to follow good practices, then this is where the ISO comes into picture. So this is where, you know, I mean, so far for past, you know, 30, 40 minutes, I've been, you know, uh, developing context for our dialogue on, on the, the standardization. So if we have to create value for our internal and external customers, if we have to create value uh, for our stakeholders, then there are various tools and techniques available to us. And there are certain benchmark practices or there are certain good practices uh, which are available to us. And those practices are available from ISO. So ISO stands for International Organization for Standardization. Uh, uh, it is it is pronounced as ISO. ISO means uh, in Greek. ISO means equal. So you like you know isometric triangle. So you know you are equal to your customers or you are equal to your stakeholders. So that's why we pronounced it as ISO. So ISO is a uh, is a worldwide federation of uh, national standardization bodies. Uh, so around hundred hundred and sixty five countries right now they are the members of the ISO. So ISO is a non-government organization. Uh, they are based in Geneva and they have been established in 1947. And their mission is to promote the development of the standardization and related activities in the world with a view to facilitating the international exchange of goods and services and developing cooperation in the spheres of intellectual, scientific, technological and economic activities. So it is basically a result of an international agreements uh, within this national standardization bodies. So basically ISO, you know, ISO has got many standards and uh, the most famous standard of ISO is ISO 9001. Probably every one of you have heard of ISO 9001, which stands for quality management system. Now, uh, before we get into what is what is management system standard, uh, we need to understand what is system. So let us try to understand what is system. Anybody, please put your comments on the chat box quickly. What is system according to you? What is system? Quickly, yeah, method, yeah, Jenny, yeah. Way of measuring and quantifying, lovely. Okay, Edward, Brendan, set of things working together, good. So system is defined as set of elements arranged in an orderly manner to accomplish an objective. Yes, test a step-by-step -step approach. So again, I would like to repeat the definition of the system. System is defined as a set of elements arranged in an orderly manner to accomplish an objective. So there are a few examples of system. So let's take a computer. Computer is a system because what are the elements of computer? So we have uh, uh, we have CPU, we have motherboard, we have uh, power supply, we have input output devices like monitor, keyboard, and mouse. So those are the elements arranged in an orderly manner. And what is an objective? Is to process the information, is to process the data. Business management. What are the elements of business management? So we have. Uh, you know, inbound logistics, we have outbound logistics, we have operations, we have manufacturing, we have service delivery, we have finance, we have account, we have human resources, we have technology management and support, we have infrastructure management, we have facility management. All these are arranged in orderly manner 
in order to accomplish an objective is to make a profit and to satisfy or to delight the stakeholders. Quality management, uh, the elements of quality management are quality policy, quality objectives, quality processes, quality procedures, quality plan, quality templates. These are arranged in orderly manner to deliver the quality and to delight the customers. We human beings, we are also customers. I mean, just think about it. I will not elaborate much on that. So we are also system and all of us being human beings, we have our objectives to achieve in our life. So let us try to understand the key concept of a system theory. System is a comprehensive assembly of parts becoming an organization to achieve the stated goals. Uh, so, you know, we have already seen this. Uh, the, 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 there are very, various elements they come together in an orderly manner to accomplish an objective. A system uh, is called open if it is an interaction with the environment and close if it is it does not have an interaction with the environment. So uh, take an example of an air, air conditioner. Air conditioner is a system. So it is it is an open system because it interacts with the environment. It has got an element called thermocouple. The thermocouple is going to sense the, the temperature in the room and accordingly it's going to give a signal to the compressor and to the motor so that it works faster and makes the room cooler. So system is open, so it has to have an uh, you know, interaction with the environment. If it does not have uh, the interaction with the environment, then the system is going to conk off. That means it's not going to work, it's going to fail. And every system, uh, you know, has got a boundary. So every system is defined, described and understood by the boundaries uh, within which uh, it performs. So, you know, I mean, the HR has got his own boundary. The internal audit auditors have their own scope and boundary. Uh, we call it materiality, you know. So what is what is what is significant to us? What is important to us? So that is the boundary. And every system has a boundary in the sense that Every system has got the capability and capacity. So, for example, uh, if you have a car and in, if the car has got a capacity of five passengers, you cannot uh, load more than five passengers. If you try to do that and if you try to you know, drive your car, there is a possibility that system might fail. And every system uh, is subject to entropy. That means it has got a tendency to run down. Entropy is a term we use in physics the energy flows from higher potential to lower potential. So the every system, I, like we, we human beings, you see, uh, we, we get up in the morning, uh, you know, we are so fresh. We go to work, uh, we have a breakfast, uh, we work, then we have lunch time. Then we, we again work, then we have tea time, then we finish work by say six, five, seven, whatever time it is. We go home. Uh, we attend to household chores, uh, we interact with our family members, we have a supper or dinner and then you know, feel, we, we feel so exhausted. We go back to sleep to recoup our energy. So, you know, we being again a system, we need to have that, um, you know, rest is required so that we, uh, you know, we recoup our energies and then again we start performing, our, you know, to our usual self. So every system, if you don't focus on the system, system will go down. So that is what you have to make sure. So every system uh, will try to maintain an equilibrium, that means steady state by taking resource to corrective action. And this is possible when system has its own feedback system. That means if the system is interacting with its environment. So environment, we have seen internal factors and external factors. Environment, we have seen the stakeholders. So if you are all the time interacting with your internal factors and external factors, you are interacting with the stakeholders on a continual basis, then as a system, you will maintain a steady state or equilibrium. So every system is born with a bug with which will eventually destroy the system. So you have to understand no system will continue forever. Every system has got certain problems, issues within within itself. So we need to find out and we need to extend the life cycle of the system. So uh, today, if you see. Uh, uh, OK. Today, uh, 10 years back, probably, you know, if you have seen Fortune 5 list of Fortune 500 companies after 10 years, 50% of the companies are not there. 
they have gone, simply disappeared. All right, so, uh, you know, I mean, recently probably you heard in China, there are two top, you know, real estate companies have been busted. So the companies, you know, if they don't, uh, you know, interact with their internal and external environment, and they don't take uh, uh, take the corrective action uh, in time they then they are likely to fail so same thing you know our universe is also built on the system theory so we have the the macro economic macro factors and the micro factors and uh, you have to understand that our universe uh, in reality is based on the complementary opposite polarities that means in our universe you will find there is opposite of everything so if you have white, then you will have black. All right, if you have light, then you will have darkness. If you have day, then you will have night. If you have left, then you will have right. If you have up, you will have down. So there is an opposite of everything. So opposite of system is chaos. All right. So if you don't, if, if, if there is an absence of system, then there is a kiosk. You have to understand. Just take an example of a traffic signal. The traffic signal is such a simple, uh, you know, machine and human interaction that you have a pole and you have three lights, green, orange or yellow and red. And you have certain, you know, the, the, the lines Either, either the solid lines or the broken lines on the road. And we drivers and we pedestrians, we follow those lights and we follow those uh, solid lines and the broken lines. If you don't follow, then you would know very well know what would happen. So if you don't follow the system, there will be chaos. And you have to understand that every system is a thing and every thing is a product of thought. So the, the thought is a thing and a thing is a thought. So how do I explain it to you? If you have a table, then the table is a thing. But in order to build that table, table, you have to think about it first. So you have to think what kind of table you would like to have, whether you would like to have work table or whether you would like to have a dining table or whether you would like to have, uh, you know, the computer table, any, any sort of a table. Now you like to have you have you have to have the design in your thought process. You have to think about what kind of material I require. Whether I would like to have the wooden table or whether I would like to have it, you know, the made of the wrought iron or made of a steel or a plastic or a polymer. What is going to be the surface of the table? It's going to be a marble, or it's going to be a granite, or it's going to be a wood. Uh, what kind of size? You know, what is the size of the table? What is the height of the table? So I'm going to think about it. I'm going to create a blueprint first in my mind. Then I'm going to put that blueprint on the paper. And then I'm going to start building that particular table. And when the table is made, that becomes a system. So table and chair is a system which facilitate for us to sit down comfortably and do our work. All right. So thinking is a circular. So you see, we think in a circular way and a linear way. So you will have to be very clear about the thought process. If you're, if in your mind, if there is a chaos, then there is that. That means there is no system in your mind. Your your mind doesn't work in a systematic way. So all of you have to be a mindful. If you remember last year, I have a. I have taken entire session on mindfulness. So mindfulness, you have to develop that mindfulness. Thereby, you know that in my mind, I am thinking in a systematic way. So when you think in a systematic way, you create a system and the system delivers the value. All right. So this is what we have covered with the system theory. So system theory is clear to you. Yes, no, maybe. Please type yes, no, maybe if system theory is clear to you. Everyone, please give input your feedback. 
Is system theory clear to you? All right, now let's come to the management system. Management system is the way in which an organization manages the interrelated parts of the business in order to achieve its objective. So again, I'll repeat the definition of management system. Management system is the way in which an organization manages the interrelated parts of its business. What are the parts of the business we have already seen? Inbound logistics, outbound logistics, operations, manufacturing, supply chain, customer support, customer service, marketing, sales, finance, accounts, human resources, technology support, facility management. All these interrelated parts of a business are in order to achieve the objective is to make profit and make everybody happy. So uh, these objectives can be further broken down into product or service quality, operational efficiency, environmental performance, health and safety management in the workplace and many more. So ISO management system standards help organizations improve their performance by specifying repeatable steps that organizations consciously implement to achieve their goals and objectives. So what is ISO management system standards? They are going to help us to improve our performances by, you know, specifying the repeatable steps. Because when you have things standardized and when you do it in a repeated way, then you are going to get the same results. And that you do consciously, that means you do in a mindful manner. So system, when you drive the car, you have to be very mindful. You cannot be absent-minded and drive the car, all right? Yes, you can be absent-minded and you can still drive the car provided you know your competence level is so high. Because now when you shift the gear or you pump the brake, you don't think it happens automatically because now it has gone into your conscious, you know, it has, so you have developed an unconscious competence. So without thinking you do it and you do it perfectly all right. So, you know, you have to develop as a people, you need to develop the way of thinking by which you standardize the things and you keep on repeating so that you achieve the goals and objectives. And you have to create an organization culture. So that is human resources and culture department is very important that you create a culture uh, which is, uh, you know, reflexively engages in a continuous cycle of self-evaluation, correction and improvement of operations. Now self-evaluation, you do yourself, the internal audit department is there, uh, the correction. So in case you are not doing it properly, you're not doing the way you're supposed to do it, then don't you know indulge into blame fixing you do the corrective action be mature people and improve your operations and processes by heightening the employee awareness and training management leadership and commitment so that is what the iso management system standard does now i have already emailed to you uh, the copies of the two management standards one is ISO 9000 and the other is ISO 45001. Initially, I think I, by mistake, emailed you ISO 14001. And one of my colleague, Rutuja, she pointed out to me. So, and later on, then Shailesh also emailed it to you a copy of ISO 45001. So, did you have an opportunity to go through the standards? Yes, no, maybe. It's okay. If you have not gone through them yet. So if you have not gone through them yet, then I would sincerely request you that you go through uh, both the standards uh, today and tomorrow, because on Wednesday we are going to have one more session so that it is very clear to you that, you know, you would know then what questions to ask me. So I would sincerely urge you, uh, if you are comfortable reading them on the computer screen, so please read them. If you are not comfortable, take a printout take home, read it, because it's going to elevate your consciousness. It's going to elevate your understanding. It's going to elevate your competence level. So please do that. So do I have a commitment from all of you that you are going to do that? Yes, no, maybe. 
the next two days, today and tomorrow. All right, thank you very much. So let's move on. What are the benefits of effective management system in our organization? So what are the benefits of you know implementing ISO standards? So benefits of implementing ISO standards is that we we learn to use our resources in very efficient manner and thereby we improve the financial performance. Uh, all these standards are based on uh, the risk based thinking. So we improve on the risk management. People from the internal audit department would agree with me that the entire internal audit is the exercise in risk management. Yes, no, maybe. Internal audit department. Yes. All right. So we develop this risk based thinking and we improve our risk management and we protect our people and the environment. Uh, we increase our capability to deliver consistent and improved services and product, thereby increasing uh, value to our customers and to other stakeholders. And management system standards are result of consensus among international experts. So when we are when we are implementing ISO standards, that means we are we are implementing international benchmarks. So you have to you have to understand that when you claim that your company is certified to ISO 9000 or ISO 45001, that means you have processes within your organization which are based on international benchmark. All right, now let's come to the new concept process. Process is defined as set of activities which we convert to convert uh, inputs into value added output. OK, so when we talk about the processes, we have certain inputs. So what are those inputs? So these are the five inputs. So we are talking about uh, manpower. We are talking about machines. We are talking about material. We talk about methods. We talk about money. So these are the inputs. The inputs are, uh, you know, are are given to certain transformational system or activities. So what are those activities? Either either we alter or we transport or we store or we inspect. So if we are going to get the raw material, if you are into manufacturing, then what we are going to do is that we are going to, uh, you know, get the various raw materials. And we are going to cook those raw materials in in particular uh, formulae, and then we are going to have our output. We are going to have a finished product. If we have the machines, then we are going to get various parts. If we have automobile, we are going to get various parts, and we are going to assemble them. That is called an alteration. And you know, the, the all these inputs go through the four uh, you know activities: either alteration, transportation, storage, and inspection. And the output is delivered to the customer. So output could be the, the goods and services. So every every process, when we say the process, every process will have certain inputs. Every process will have certain outputs. The every process has got certain transformational activities such as alternation, uh, transportation, storage and inspection. Now, as we know that uh, the these processes will operate within an environment, so we'll have the the internal environment and the external environment. So we have the, the 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 competitors, we have regulators, we have the economy, we have the customers, we have suppliers, we have technology, uh, we have suppliers, we have the pestle, political, economical, social, technological. Now within this context, the processes will occur. Now in in order to to do the value addition, we have to make sure that these processes. All these transformational activities are monitored and controlled on the continual basis. So process is a is a controlled activities. You have to understand that it is a controlled activity. So if we control our inputs, if we control uh, the transformational activities, then we are going to have the controlled output in a consistent manner. So 
in in ISO, ISO standard, ISO management system standards are based on system theory and the processes approach. So process approach means everything you you break down to the processes and you manage as a processes. So when we have the process approach, we have to think about the input. So, uh, you know, people would like to know that how do we prepare for an internal audit? Uh, the incoming ISO internal audit. So my. Uh, you know, my advice is that you first get clear your process approach. That means uh, you need to know that, you know, this is the process which I conduct. So, for example, I take a process uh, like uh, let's take uh, one particular process attending to the customer either in the farm either in the pharmacy or in the hardware house then what is my process so as soon as the customer walk in you know i welcome that customer I say hello and then uh, the customer then just walks into the aisle if it's a pharmacy then definitely uh, i know the customer in the pharmacy walks in for two purpose either he will walk in for the with the prescription or he will walk in for the um, uh, the OTC product, you know, or the counter products. Uh, so uh, if it's a prescription, so uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to read that prescription very carefully. All right. Uh, and then if I don't understand anything, I'm going to ask questions to my customer. If, if it's still there is a doubt, I can still connect with the prescribing hospital or the doctor. And then uh, according to the prescription, I'm going to look into my my stocks on the shelves. And uh, I'm going to pick up those uh, products for my customer and uh, I'm going to um, see that uh, whatever customer is asking for. So for, for example, the customer is asking for a particular medicine of 2 MG. I'm not going to give 4 MG to that customer. I'm going to give 2 MG to that customer, which is very important. For example, uh, the uh, the doctor is prescribing a particular brand of uh, medicine. If I don't have that particular brand, if I have some other brand, then I have to take a permission from the patient. I have to take a permission from the the prescribing entity, either doctor or the hospital. Is that I have an equivalent brand? Will that be okay for you? So that the change in the requirement is going to you are going to have the authorization and acceptance from the customer uh, you are going to make a proper billing uh, and then you are going to tell okay this is going to cost you this much either customer is going to pay in cash or through credit card or through app you make sure that you do a proper billing and if the customer is going to give you in cash then you make sure that uh, you return the change uh, to your customer and then you um, wish customer uh, very well and say so that is how you know and you offer the service with a smile uh, the customer pick up picks up your vibe yeah i mean if you are unhappy if you are angry the customer is going to feel it so that is how you deliver your service so that is a process so when you are preparing for the uh, the iso audit you know i mean if you remember that in last year we have created manuals, the procedure manuals, the process manuals for all these processes. Do you still refer to them? Yes, no, maybe. I would like to, uh, you know, the old members to, you know, answer this question. Yes, do you do you refer to this manuals? Yes, no, maybe. We have created so many manuals. We have created HR manual. We have created manual for the pharmacy operations. We have created manual for the hardware house. We have created manual occupational health and safety manual for the hardware house. Uh, we have the risk assessment manual. Uh, do you refer to this manuals? Yes, no, maybe yes. So I have answer from Jenny. Yes, Sonia. Yes, Vikas. Yes, yeah. So you need to revisit this manual and you need to find out that are there any changes, major changes, minor changes, either in the input or in the process, the way we the transformational activities. So uh, the auditor is going to you know ask for you know I mean he's also going to have the process approach. So you say okay fine you are doing this process. What are your inputs? What what are those five M's? You know what are the what is the manpower? What is the competency? What is the training? 
uh, what is what what are what are the methods uh, what material you handle what are the machines you operate do you know how to operate those machines okay so and then how you do that activity how do you do that process so whether you have process maps you have procedural instructions you have any methods uh, i think you you have a particular uh, the application software we you uh, use it i i don't recollect the name of the software the erp solution which you use can you just name it for me pharmacy hardware house use a particular software what is the name of the software i believe it's an australian software provided by an australian company what's the name of the software anybody erp yes erp yeah right so you have the erp uh, i think uh, today we don't have anybody from the uh, technology department is that so okay so you have the erp in the erp the erp stands for enterprise resource planning software so erp uh, you have the crm uh, you have the other processes into the erp you have logistics you have materials module materials management module you have supply chain module you have the hr module all these uh, you have finance and accounts module all these models are built into erp so basically what you do is that you you have those uh, the the applications in front of you and you key in the data so all of you have to make sure that you key in the data data real time that means whenever there is an there is an transactional activity you have to key in the data if you key in the data at the end of the day or at the end of the week definitely there are going to be the mistake so for example the customer walks in yeah so you have the budget for financial forecasting yes so when the customer walks in the store the customer wants a real time data he wants a real time information he wants a real time uh, you know the invoice and the receipt for the payment which has been made by him uh, you would like to scan the prescription and keep it for the record so all those you know uh, the 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 transaction should occur the real time and the, the data should be uh, input in the uh, in, you should input the data in the real time <laughs> so you have to make sure that uh, you have to make sure that uh, you have all the inputs uh, in a controlled manner uh, you carry on the activities in the controlled manner so when we are talking about the process you know these these are basically we are answering uh the questions to us 5w and 3h uh, what we are going to do uh, when we are going to do who's going to do it when we are going to do it where we are going to do it so these are the 5w's and what are the 3h how we are going to do how much we are going to do and how do we know that whatever we are supposed to do we have done it so that is the approach 5w's when we talk about the process approach uh we we basically talk about 5w's and 3h and uh the process you have to see that when we talk about the element of the single process so we have the source of the input so the input is coming from the previous process or input is coming from the either internal supplier or the external supplier uh then we have the inputs so inputs we have the material resources and the requirements then we have the transformational activities so that we have the alteration uh, trans transportation and so on and so forth then again we have the output that is product and services or the decisions uh, we have to review the uh, the the output so that we know that whatever we are supposed to produce uh, we have done it in a value added manner and then we have the controlled activities so uh, in the internal audit we talk about you know two factors one one is the control activities and the other is a controlled environment so these are the two you know things we put into it and then we have the single process so and then we we have the you know the the all in processes are connected with each other so when we are talking about process 1 so process 1 gives input to process 2 uh process 1 uh, so the the output of the process 1 is the uh, input of the process 2 and output of the process 2 is the uh, is the is the input of the process 3 so this is how it moves on and here this is the whole is our value chain activity so in this value chain we have to make sure that there are there are which are the critical aspects 
and where we are going to lose the value and how we are going to enhance the value. So we have to make sure that we create the value. So you have to make sure that, uh, you know, whatever you demonstrate to your auditor, that you are doing a value created activity. So you are aware of the inputs, you are aware of the uh, aware of the activities, you are aware of the, uh, the, 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 the control inputs and the controlled environment. You are aware of the output. You are aware of the aware of the output parameters. So these are the things auditors expect from you that this is what you need to demonstrate. So here we complete the process approach. Is the process approach clear to you, all of you? Yes, no, maybe. Please give a response. Process approach. Is it clear to you? Yes, no, maybe. All right. Now we move on to the next concept of management ISO management system. Is that uh, uh, we follow deeming cycle called plan, do, check, act. So that is what is called PDCA, and uh, this has been uh, propounded by Professor uh, William Edwards Deming. Professor Deming was a profession professor of operations management in USA. And he was a person responsible for teaching quality management to Japanese people after World War II. And he came out with this idea of PDCA cycle. So what he says is that whatever you're going to do first planning, so you, you do the plan, you define the objectives, why you would like to do, do this particular process, or why you would like to do this particular activity. And you, you, you do according to whatever your plan. So when you are doing that activity according to the plan, you check it whether you are doing it according to the plan. And if there are any deviations or if there are any aberrations, if there are any changes, then take suitable corrective action. So that is called the act. So PDCA cycle. Now PDCA cycle is not new to us. All of us, we follow PDCA cycle. For example, if I mean, take an example of today's uh, training session, we have followed PDCA cycle. That means, uh, you know, uh, myself, Jonathan and Rajendra, you know, we uh, involved in the planning. We exchanged a couple of emails and we decided that we are going to have the training on uh, Monday and Wednesday uh, from Jonathan and Rajendra's side that made sure that, you know, all of you are available for the training. So, uh, you know, he, he shared with me all the email ID of all you people after that. I created an email and created Teams meeting and sent an invite to you, all of you, including uh, the training material. I have prepared this particular presentation, especially for this particular training, because I wanted to make sure that, you know, you without going through uh, the 40 hours training, how do you get the, uh, the distillation of the entire ISO standardization in just two sessions? So, you know, I had to think very hard and then I have designed this particular uh, PowerPoint presentation slide decks. Uh, I have organized my thoughts in such a way that I try to deliver maximum value to you. Uh, so when so that was the planning now doing is that, you know, I'm delivering the training. You are absorbing the training. This is what the doing right now is happening and the check. Check is that every time I explain a particular concept to you, I check with you whether you got it correctly or not, because my, my training objective is very clear that I would like to deliver training to you so that you get the, the required knowledge of the standardization and how do you face the audit uh, in just two sessions. So I'm just checking, I'm taking feedback from you. See, this is what, you know, I'm open to interaction. This is a system approach. So I'm 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 taking a feedback from you. And if I feel that if you know you don't get it correctly, then I'm going to check that 
you know my way of delivery probably i'm going to explain to you in a in a some other manner probably i'm going to give you some more example so that i make sure that you understand the concept so this is how pdcs cycle we follow all the time all right so uh, in pdc cycle basically what we do is that uh, we plan for our vision mission values and environmental scan environmental scan as you know uh, those are external environment and the internal environment the strategic goals and objectives from strategic goals and objectives we are going to have the key key performance indicators so keep performance indicators are going to be departmental and they are there are going to be the kpis for the people so this is the way we do do the planning for the entire company we do the planning for the department wise and in two we have the goal development uh, we have the campus that is you know campus means your particular department and the function level action plan and then we have the piloting program or we have the service integration or we have you know the manufacturing operations so that is what is a two uh, then in check we have the uh, the quarterly score reviews we have period reviews uh, we have the internal audits we have the measurement and data analysis we have the feedback from the stakeholders and then the act is that we have the annual continual improvement process we have analysis of results we modify the process as needed and then we set uh, new long term and short term process goals and objectives so that is the pdca cycle so uh, if you see the standard the standard which uh, you know i have given you the copy uh, the standard uh, is divided into uh, the sub clauses or the chapters so every iso standard management system standard i would say i would say every but not all uh, they have 10 chapters so chapter number 1 chapter 2 chapter 3 chapter 4 chapter 5 these chapters are not called chapters but for a sake of understanding i am referring to them as a chapter but in iso language we call them as clauses all right and the main clauses the main meat uh, meat is uh, it starts from clause number 4 so if you see clause number 4 is a context clause number 4 is a context of the organization clause number 5 is a leadership clause number 6 is planning clause number 7 is support and operation okay clause number 8 clause number 8 is basically operation clause number 9 is measurement analysis and clause number 10 is a improvement so these are the 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 clauses what you see here and here you see the pdca cycle so entire standard is based on the pdca cycle and then the standard is again based on the continual improvement that means the standard wants to improve continually so your internal audit uh, in internal audit or your external audit or your surveillance audit the auditor is going to check how, you know what way you have been successful in continually improving your system and your processes thereby continually improving your value added activity to your customers by continually improving on your key key performance indicators so that is the another factor which uh, you know auditor is going to ask so uh, uh, the the in iso 9001 2015 or uh, 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 ISO 45001, that is Occupational Health and Safety. Uh, basically, there is, you know, we are going to get into detail about the, you know, plan factor. So we are going to see PDC, a plan, do, check, and act. So uh, the first step is to define the context. Define the context means try to understand what are the external and internal environment, and who are your stakeholders and who are your interested parties. uh then define the scope objectives and policies of the organization so you will have in the internal audit you will have policies for everything so you need to define the scope objectives and the policies <clears throat> then next is to determine determine the processes which we have already done we have not only determined the processes we have already documented this processes plus we have the erp system going on so erp is nothing but the 
processes which have been automated. So automation of the processes are the ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning Software. Uh, then uh, we have we have to determine the sequence of the processes. Again, ERP does that for us. Uh, we have we have to define the people and uh, the remits who take the process ownership and the accountability. So we have the departmental owners. Uh, we have the process owners. We have the process sub owners. We have the alternate uh, owners of the processes. So we have to assign the responsibility and authority for each process. Define the need for documenting the information today. You know we are in a highly regulated environment. For example, uh, uh, I don't know whether your company has gone for ISO 27001 or not, Information Security Management System, because in pharmaceutical, uh, the, the pharmacy, you are dealing with a PII, that is a personally identifiable information. That means you process, you have the, the, the personal data, you have the medical information about the patient, uh, you have the uh, the financial information about the patient that is the credit card data. So uh, all the time we are uh, you know following following documented information. So wherever possible, we have to make sure that the information uh, and the data needs to be protected. Uh, then we need to define the inter interfaces and the the risk and the activities within the process. So risk based thinking is very important. So uh, in planning, we have to find out uh, you know, how we are going to uh, apply the risk based thinking. Uh, then we have to define the monitoring and measurement requirement. That means for every process, every process needs to be monitored. Every process needs to be measured. So when we monitor, you have to understand that if you do not monitor and if you do not measure, you cannot control it. All right. So for example, you are a driving car. You cannot control your car until and unless you monitor the road and you measure you know, your speed on the, on the speedometer. Yeah. So you, for every process, for every system, it requires continual monitoring and measurement. So that is again the the part of the the uh, the uh, you know the planning phase. Now what you are going to monitor? So you are going to monitor. Uh, you first of all you are going to define what is the criteria. You are going to re review the performance. You are going to monitor and measure the satisfaction level of your interested parties. You are going to monitor the supplier performance. You are going to monitor on time delivery and lead times. You are going to monitor failure rates and waste. You are going to monitor process cost. You are going to monitor incident frequency. I mean, if there are any process failures, uh, what is the frequency of the incident? And uh, there are other measures of conformity with the requirements. So these are the factors uh, which are going to monitor. Uh, then, uh, you know, we come to the step where we have to do the activities. So in doing what we are going to do, we are going to define the resources required. So what are the resources required for us? We require human resources. We, are, we require infrastructure and facility. Uh, we require the environment. For example, infrastructure and facility. In, in, in every pharmacy, you require a refrigerator to store the medicines. And you need to monitor the temperature of the, 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 the refrigerator. So what's going to be the temperature? So then, you know, you if you're going to monitor the temperature, you the thermometer, you're going to calibrate that th thermometer so you you are sure that whatever the the indication whatever the measurement it is showing uh, it is accurate and it is precise so uh, you are going to monitor the environment naturally in you know most of your pharmacies would be the environment there are two types of environment one is the physical environment the other is the the human environment so for example uh, in the pharmacy or in the stores uh, what kind of environment you are going to, you know, people environment you are going to have, or you know, company, what going, what kind of, you know, soft environment you are going to have? How you deal with each other? Are you, are you, are you uh, all the time blaming each other? Uh, are you, uh, you know, fighting with each other? Uh, are you uh, gossiping uh, against each other? You know, these are the the negative factors. These are the negative environments uh, which don't produce the good results. So these you need to define. 
uh, what kind of information is required, what kind of data is required, what are the uh, natural resources required, including the knowledge and competence, what are the materials you require, what are the financial resources you require. So uh, these are the factors which uh, you need to uh, define, you need to collect, you need to gather. Uh, then you need to make sure that the processes confirm uh, to their characteristics. That means process are supposed to do certain activities. So you have to make sure that, uh, you know, the processes uh, follow uh, their uh, their actual actual routine path. Uh, so you check your inputs, you check your output, you check the transformational activities, you check the environment. So all the monitoring and measurement which takes place. So that is going to be your check activities. Uh, then comes the improvement. So that means whatever you are doing, you are improving. Uh, you you need you need to find out that where are the uh, you know the uh, non-value added added activities. So wherever there are non-value activities, that means it is going to absorb your resources and they are not going to produce. Uh, desired results for you. So you have to make sure that you cut down on the non value added activities. Now we have uh, just six minutes left, so I'm going to just touch upon the risk based thinking. Uh, so what is risk based thinking? So risk based thinking is basically, you know, that we do automatically all the time. I mean, it is, you know, we human beings, uh, we have been hardware Our brain is hardware to do the risk based thinking. If we had not been hardware uh, by the evolution, you know, we wouldn't have been human beings today. You know, just understand like we all we all come from the chimpanzees. OK, so from chimpanzees we become, you know, the the homo homo erectus and from the homo erectus we became the homo sapiens and from homo sapiens we being whatever we are today. And all that because you know we have been doing risk based thinking from where the danger is coming. So today when you cross the road, you automatically do risk based thinking. So you are going to look at the left. You are going to look at the right. You are going to look at the signal. And when you say the signal is green for you to walk, you to cross the road, you are going to cross the road on zebra crossing. All right, so that is what you do the risk based thinking all the time. And many times, you know, you are aware of the risk, but still you do that activity. That means if some of us are are, uh, you know, engaged in smoking, we smoke. You know, what are the risk in smoking? All right. But then, you know, what we have done is that we have developed what is called as a risk homeostasis. That means we have adjusted ourselves to that particular risk. We have accepted that risk. We have risk tolerance, but that is sometimes it is bad for an individual. Of course, from the organizational point of view, we will have the risk tolerance. That's a separate factor because in order to grow in your life, you need to take certain risk, but you need to take the, the risk in a such a way that it gives you an opportunity. So take an example, uh, people drive the car, but they don't uh, fasten the seat belt. Now they are very well aware what is the risk factor, but they don't fasten the seat belt. So that is what is called as the risk homeostasis. So, you, you know, I mean, what I'm trying to tell you that we human beings, we are aware by the by the nature, we are we are subconsciously are used to risk based thinking. All right, we people we gamble. When we gamble, we know that you know there is a risk we lose the money, but at the same time we see the opportunities and that is how we we uh, we readjust our risk tolerances. So uh, the the concept of risk management or risk thinking is implicit in the standard. So in everywhere in the standard. Uh, Either it is ISO 9000 or ISO 45001 or any any standard of ISO. We always do the risk based thinking. Uh, we make sure that whenever we we look into a particular processes or chain of processes, uh, we 
think about what is the inherent risk in that particular process. So we begin and throughout we do the risk based thinking and risk based thinking is basically is a preventive action, which is a part of our strategic and operational planning. All right, so. Um, uh, we will 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 do the risk based thinking uh, in the next uh, session. I'll touch upon it and then we'll get into like how do you you know address the internal audit and how do you make preparations for the internal audit? So today's lecture, uh, what I've tried to do is that uh, if you read the standard, the standard is written in very simple language. There are terms, specific terms used in the standard. Please read the terms first. Try to clarify the terms and then you read the standard. It is written in very simple language. Wherever the standard, the word is used shall. That means anything which comes after shall is absolutely necessary, absolutely mandatory. So read the standard. You will understand it. If you don't understand it, we will have the question and answer next session. That is on the Friday. Uh, or, uh, not Friday, Wednesday, I'm sorry. Uh, so day after tomorrow, make sure that all of you uh, join in, log in at least 10 minutes in advance so that we can start exactly at 10 o'clock. Today, uh, people join late and you know we wanted people to gather. We wanted to make the everybody to come in and uh, we started at 1030 and we lost precious 30 minutes. So I sincerely appeal to you that log in 10 minutes early. Uh, we start exactly at 10 o'clock next session. Uh, please read both the standards very carefully. Uh, city pharmacy people uh, may not read ISO 45001, which is not applicable to you. So for pharmacy division, just read ISO 9001. Uh, for hardware house, you need to read ISO 9000 and ISO 45000. Again, mostly addressed to the new people. Uh, for internal audit department, you please read both the standards because you will be auditing both ISO 9000 and ISO 45000. So uh, that's all from me uh, for today. Uh, anything you need to know, anything you have any doubts, maybe we can close in in next five minutes. Any doubts, any clarifications? All clear? Yes, no, maybe. Please respond if you have any queries or questions. All clear? Yes, please respond. Brendan, yes, okay. All right. Everybody, please respond so that I'm very clear. Yes, Vincent, Jenny. Yeah, Bendit, all good. Yes, Chester, good. Kaya, fine, good. Vikas, good. Michael. Okay, so all good here. And uh, I'll see you uh, on Wednesday, 10 o'clock sharp. Please join 10 minutes early so that we can start at 10 o'clock. Thank you very much. Have a good day.